Hi friends, welcome to the Wild Side. I'm Steve Hall. We begin with a big happy birthday to the King of England. I know that sounds a little strange for our show, but we're also celebrating the 265th anniversary of Fort Loudoun, where British soldiers took up residence in Tennessee during the French and Indian War. Now the natural beauty surrounding Fort Loudoun is the kind of thing that just makes you stop for a moment. But for the soldiers and their families, the new home brought few of the comforts they had back in England. A thick wooded wilderness with colorful landscapes is enticing for exploration and part of a treacherous trail for the British Army to a place where survival will always be uncertain. Well, you're 150 miles from anything. You have no wagon roads. The only way to get things here is on horseback or on your back. The isolation issue was always a problem, and that it, it was a problem both mentally, but it was also a problem for as far as, as supply. They, they almost never had more than two months of actual supplies here, and they never became self-sufficient. It is 1756. For the first time, the King's troops have pushed west past the mountains to establish a fortification, and soldiers have their families with them. The French are currently the enemy, with the American Revolution more than 20 years away. At this point in history, the English are the good guys. If you speak English, the English are the good guys. There's not a whole lot different to it. Uh, we're not calling them the bloody backs. or the, We're not even actually calling them the redcoats yet. They're just the army. The new neighbors for the British community are Cherokee Indians who are friendly, but bring an unexpected culture shock to the Europeans. We sit there and the British look at them as savages, and they were not. They were more advanced in some way, especially with, their, with the females, the women in their culture were treated a lot better and had a lot more say. And, and the British were just dumbfounded by that and like, how could you let that happen? They would call us a petticoat government because the women had a voice in council. And the women would have say, like if they brought prisoners in, the women would have a say as to what would happen to those prisoners because it was the women who had lost husbands and sons and grandsons. And so the women got to say what happened. The women also would sit in council and say whether we went to war or not. And this was unheard of in the English society which came here because their women were bought and sold like property. The fathers would sell their daughters to the husbands for a dowry. Those women had no rights. I think somehow it was the mixing of, of our native beliefs and the Europeans that came here that gave us the culture that America has now. Despite the differences in women's rights, the Cherokees still offer some help at first. The idea was the Cherokee gave them 700 acres of land to farm and they would grow corn and be semi-self-sufficient and that just, A, there wasn't enough time and B, it just never really happened. And it would be a difficult four years of existence, one in which the commander would proclaim in his diary that they had been forsaken by God and man. Trying to build a fort in this winter time, you gotta do what you gotta do. Such is the history revealed to visitors daily at Fort Loudoun State Park, but especially during the annual garrison days when rangers and volunteers portray people of the past. Most of what's going on here this weekend is based around the construction of the fort. So we have a lot of things going on in the fort that, that really represent that, as well as on the military side. Firing of the muskets, bad mouthing the French, everything the English did a lot of. What I'm really doing is educating the public about how we really became ourselves today and just kind of showing how we became the nation that we were, starting from the roots. I think people gain a better understanding of what life was like back in the 18th century, and that's what the main goal is. And then our next goal is to help the schools and help people uh, understand what the French and Indian War was all about, or Seven Years War, if I may be proper. Uh, and see a different side besides what you're seeing in the textbook. Since this is linen, we can't scrub it like we can cotton. So this is not a scrub board, this has got a bettle. And we'd actually just beat the clothes. Among the information that may not be available in a textbook are some of the lesser known facts about doing laundry. One of the things that surprises our visitors is the chamber line, which is actually urine that they would gather up every morning and they would let it sit for about 24 hours to a couple of weeks and let, let the urine evaporate, then it's ammonia, and that's what they'd use for their bleach. From woodworking 
backbone, to methods of um, medical procedure, it is a challenge in life. The tooth pulling to uh, bloodletting, that was pretty common at the time. So For some of these living historians, stepping into the role of someone who lived more than two and a half centuries ago brings a new appreciation, not only for the past, but for the present. For me personally, I, I, I really appreciate what we have today uh, in terms of medical, not only just the medical world, but how we live today, and I, I try to not take it for granted. I want people to get just the knowledge of this place and that time, and just, just want people to leave here learning something they wouldn't have otherwise known. Fort Loudoun is named for the Earl of Loudoun, who was commander of the British forces in North America. His portrait hangs prominently in the Park Museum, and when Grant Gebby, visiting from Scotland, learned more about the fort's history, he immediately realized he had made a connection with home. I have just learned today the amazing connection that I have with uh, Fort Loudoun, and that is that I was born and brought up in Loudoun, Scotland, and uh, I attended high school in a school called Loudoun Academy, and so my high school is right next door to Loudoun Castle, which I take to be the home of the fourth Earl of Loudoun. So that is an amazing connection for me. It's so exciting to, to hear about that. A connection with history for a 54-year-old man from Scotland is surprisingly similar to the feelings of a young girl in Tennessee. What I get out of reenacting is a personal connection to my ancestors. There's an old saying that you, before you take off, you have to know where you came from. And those people are the ones that set us on track. So the emotional side of this for me is just, just feeling that we're connected in some way, that my ancestors were the future changers, the people who made America the America that is it today. There was not a happy conclusion for the military families of Fort Loudoun. The cordial relationship with the Cherokees collapsed after conflicts with settlers in South Carolina and Virginia led to the death of several Cherokee chiefs. Fire! Warriors surrounded the fort and shut down the supply lines for nine months, starving the soldiers into surrender. It's the first time the British had ever surrendered to an indigenous people without European influence. So it was, it was gonna be a pretty big black eye to start with. And the Cherokee under the terms allowed them to march out and go back. They could either go to Charleston or go to Williamsburg. They chose to go back to Charleston. And they marched about 15 miles from here the first day. And overnight, their Cherokee escorts disappeared. And the next morning they were attacked by, depending on the reports you believe, anywhere from three to 700 uh, Cherokee warriors attacked them the next morning and, and killed about 25, 30 people outright and then took everybody else prisoner or hostage and uh, the Cherokee take over the fort. And within about a year to two years, we know the fort was primarily burned down. We're pretty sure they just didn't want the English to come back. So the easiest way to, to really seal the deal was to burn the fort down. All of the prisoners were released within a year and some of them decided to stay and live with the Cherokee. You can go to our website, wildsidetv.com, to learn more about Fort Loudoun State Park, its history, and some of the outdoor adventure available there.